the former mining town of Bargoid, located in the Caerphilly County borough of the South Wales Valleys, is famous for being the birthplace of St. Gladys and for the remnants of Arthurian legends and ancient historical sites, such as the Roman fort of Gethligar, only a couple of miles away. It is rumoured that there was an ancient monastery rising on the grounds of the town. Bargoid is also the birthplace of actress Doris Hare from the TV show On the Buses and the filming location for the episode of Doctor Who, The Green Death. The Rafa Club is the most ancient building in Bargoid and it is said to have the best ale in Britain. The exact age of the building is unknown but the original beams in the bar have been dated back to the 1640s. It is said that the building is haunted. One ghost is that of the Queen of Diamonds. The story goes that four members of a club sat down to play a game of cards in the cellar. They played at an iron table on the concrete floor. While playing, a card dropped on the floor. The players searched everywhere for the card but couldn't find it. Upon investigating the deck, they discovered that the missing card was that of the Queen of Diamonds. Some claim that the card may have been stolen by the ghost of a malevolent anti-royalist roundhead soldier. Another rumour claims that an underground tunnel exists, linking the building to a home in Gethligar or even to Hlankayachvar, which were safe havens for victims of religious persecution of the time. However, if the date of the building is in the 1640s, it was more likely during the time of the English Civil War between the Cromwellian Roundheads and King Charles' Cavaliers than during the period of religious strife in England. Opposite the Rafa Club stands what is now known as the Reds Hotel, but what originally was Gladstone Villa. Named after the former Prime Minister of the time, Gladstone Villa was built around the beginning of the last century. Between 1969 and 1978, something haunted a family for nine years on a daily basis. Gladstone Villa was the home of three generations of the Dexter family during the years of 1969 to 1978. They experienced unexplained footsteps a baby crying, poltergeist activity and even rare actual sightings. The occurrences began one night when the family heard a loud bang on the landing, as if someone had jumped from the attic onto the floor below. When the family investigated the noise, nothing was seen apart from the attic hatch door, which was wide open. However, most of the paranormal activity occurred in the master bedroom, which was where Andrew's grandparents slept. Andrew Dexter, who was a baby at the time, experienced his first brush with the paranormal. He was sleeping in a cot when his pillow was unexplainably torn in half by an unseen force. The family grew worried about such activity and decided to move baby Andrew from his room to another. Sometime later, his mother Caroline went to wake up her husband for work and was shocked when she entered the master bedroom to find Andrew's father with an ironing board lying across his torso. He was asleep at the time and hadn't noticed anything. When Andrew was older, he also experienced other happenings. One evening he was relaxing on his grandparents' bed when he felt something jump onto the bed. He looked and saw nothing. He looked around the room, but saw no sign of an animal that could have caused the action. He ran downstairs and returned with other family members, who, upon closer inspection, found claw marks on the bed. Andrew later discovered that his grandfather had had a black Labrador dog that died just before the boy's birth. Could this have been who caused the claw marks? Andrew's grandmother was startled on one occasion when she entered a room to wake her husband up, only to see the door of the boiler room swing open by itself. This caused her to flee the room in terror. Witnesses to supernatural activity is not limited to members of the family. 
a friend who had come to visit the family and was warming himself by the fire got the shock of his life when he heard a huge bang come from above his head. So frightened by the noise, he ducked his head, fearing that something was going to come crashing through the ceiling upon him. Of course, when the family went to investigate the bang, they found nothing. Other paranormal activity includes electric cables being pulled by unseen hands, light switches and even TV going on and off by themselves. And perhaps one of the most terrifying was one event that Andrew's grandfather experienced. Bill was sleeping in his bed when he awoke to find himself paralyzed. Unable to move, he looked around the room. At first, he could see nothing, but he began to hear the creaking sound of the floorboards beneath his bed. The creaking got louder and louder as it got closer to his rigid body. Then suddenly, he saw a dark shadow appear at the end of the bed, and as quickly as it appeared, it disappeared again. Grandfather Bill also had a closer encounter with the spirit. When one evening he entered the master bedroom and a glass bottle was thrown at him by an unseen force, it narrowly missed the man and left him deeply shaken. The family members witnessed the broken glass on the floor, but only Bill saw the bottle flying through the air. The paranormal activity frightened the family to such an extent that all of them except Bill moved downstairs to sleep with the lights on. Later, the intensity of the activity forced the family to seek outside help. A local medium was called, and upon entering the house, he challenged the spirits to perform. The channeler knocked on the ceiling and managed to get the entity to respond in kind with knocks. After making contact, the medium decided to communicate with the ghost by means of a trance. He determined that it was an earthbound spirit but was unable to get a name. A priest was also invited to assist the family. The holy man blessed the home and left. This seemed to have had the effect of calming the paranormal activity in the house for a while. However, not long after, the entity returned with greater power. On one such evening, the family were all around the TV when Andrew's mother saw something out of the corner of her eye. She looked across towards her mother, Rita, who was sitting on a chair. Behind the elderly lady was the full-body apparition of a monk. He was dressed in traditional vestments. However, his face was obscured by a hood he had pulled over his face. He remained for a split second before vanishing. This monk made another appearance of sorts on another occasion. Andrew was going to the bathroom. When he arrived, he found the door locked. He pushed at the door, but to no avail. His grandfather Bill came to help, but neither of them could open the door. Bill whispered, he's behind there, referring to the spirit. Andrew then heard the distinct sound of Gregorian chanting emanating from the other side of the door. The activity in the house became more frequent and intense. Two local businessmen bought the building and the family eventually moved out of the house. On the day before they left the house, back in the summer of 1978, the ghost wanted to have one last attempt at frightening the family. Andrew, his mother and grandmother had gone to sleep. The light was on and they could hear the doorknob turning continuously. They thought it might have been someone trying to get in. Then they believed perhaps it was Grandfather Bill as he was the only one who would sleep in the master bedroom. When calling out to him, they were met with only silence. However, the silence was broken by the crash of the packed suitcases being thrown against the walls of the house. Hoping it was a prank played on them by Bill, those hopes were dashed when he denied carrying out such a frightening trick. Many years later, Andrew returned to his former home, now the Reds Hotel, where he spoke with the staff who confirmed that they too had experienced paranormal activity there. 
Do you remember the sound of the baby crying? Well, in 1924, the Kinit couple lived there with their son Elvin, who sadly died at the young age of just four months. Perhaps it was him who the Dexter family heard cry during the night. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for more spooky videos?